Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ryan Delgado. Welcome back to my studio once again. Today I'm going to be showing you how I framed this painting. So stick around and let's get to it. All right, here we go. Um, let me just uh, show you what I got here. Of course, I got the frame. Uh, I got my painting then going to be putting in the frame. This is just my little self-portrait. Uh, I have not varnished this yet, so this is not going to be a permanent framing job. Um, I'm going to be taking it out as soon as I get done here, but this is just the demo on how to frame it, so I'm going to be going through the entire process of, of framing it. Um, and uh, the good news about this is I think, you know, one of the best things, if, if you are a painter, uh, one of the best things that you can learn how to do is to frame your own work. And, uh, and so I'm going to be showing you step by step here how this is done. Um, and this is, uh, this is an 8 by 10 frame, and so uh, that's, that's the good thing. Uh, I got an 8 by 10 painting. and. Uh, the good thing about that is that um, typically, you know, an eight by ten is a pretty standard size. Um, it's what you might consider a a standard size uh, because you got you know eight by tens, um, nine by twelve, eleven by fourteen, twelve by sixteen, and so on. Uh, those are your your standard sizes. Like you know, sixteen by twenty is a st pretty standard size. Basically, any size canvas that you can buy. Uh, pre-made, pre-stretched at, at a at a um, at an art store, you can find frames in those sizes as well, and so uh, that's the good thing. But if you have like a uh, a custom size, you know, painting that you've done, uh, like if you're like me and you sh like to stretch your own canvases on occasion, uh, sometimes I have paintings that are. Um, not your typical standard sizes and so I have to get the frames custom made which is kind of annoying but um, it, it, whatever uh, this is not a frame that I had to have made this is just a a, uh, a, a standard 8x10 open back frame and uh, I think I got this one from well, Blick or Jerry's Artorama one of those two uh, those are the places I like to get my frames so um, so yeah but yeah it, I, I'd say like it's it's really important to to be able to to frame your own paintings so that's what we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to do that today so got the painting here I got a couple little pieces right here this is the backing I'm gonna be used this is just a, a plain black piece of uh, uh, mat board that I cut to size and I've got this extra little piece of cardboard that I'm going to be using as filler if I need it. I don't think I will, but uh, just in case. And uh, let me also explain how I cut the uh, the backing because um, it's important to really c to cut the backing um, at a, at an accurate size. Um, and uh, what I mean by that is this is not exactly 8 by 10 inches. Um, I know I said the frame is 8 by 10, but the opening to the frame is not, it's a little bigger than 8 by 10. Um, I think I measured it at 8 and 1 8 of an inch by 10 and 1 16 of an inch. Um, that's the exact size of this, of this opening here. And so when I went to cut the, the backing, um, I just uh, took it down by a sixteenth of an inch, so I cut it um, at eight and one sixteenth by ten inches, and so it's about a sixteenth of an inch smaller than the dimensions of the opening here, and so it fits perfectly in there. And there's plenty of coverage. There's not a whole lot of uh, wiggle room here, but it's also not too snug, and uh, that's what you don't want either because if it's too snug, if it's too tight, uh, then the, the backing will kind of curl up and uh, kind of defeats the purpose of it. Um, so 
Uh, so you want the, the backing to, to fit perfectly in there um, and to, to not be too snug and also not be too loose. Uh, you don't want too much uh, of a gap in the, in the opening in the sew. Uh, so that's that. Um, I've also got the hardware here. These are the, uh, the little hangers for the, for the wire that I'm going to be attaching. And then I've got these quarter inch offset clips. And I'll be explaining those here in a second because I also kind of wanted to talk about uh, the type of canvas that you frame um, in, in relationship to the type of frame that you get. Uh, it's, uh, it's really important when you're going to buy a frame for whatever painting that you're framing to get a frame that uh, that the painting is going to fit into. Um, and what I mean by that is this is just a, a, a panel. It's, a, it's oil on canvas, but it, uh, it's canvas that I mounted to a 1 8 inch panel. So it's going to fit perfectly in the frame. Um, but if I had like a stretched canvas like this that I wanted to frame, uh, typically stretcher bars are about uh, they're about five eighths of an inch, I think. They're they're typically a little more than half an inch uh, thick, and so uh, you're going to want to pay attention to what's called the rabbit depth of the frame, which is basically this this depth of the of the frame that that your canvas fits into, uh, because not all rabbit depths are the same. This one just happens to be, I think, half an inch, and so a stretch canvas will fit in there pretty nicely. There's a little bit uh, of the canvas protruding from the back. It's not a huge deal, though. Uh, I would say if you're wanting to stretch or if you're wanting to frame a um, a stretched canvas, a good rule I would say is to make sure that the rabbit depth of the frame is at least half an inch, if not more. Um, more would be ideal uh, because I think the ideal thing would be for the entire painting to fit inside um, without having uh, without having the excess coming out from the back but it's not a huge deal as long as it's not too much um, but uh, but sometimes frames will have a rabbit depth that is a little too narrow and so a, a stretched canvas is not going to work with it so you want to pay attention to that um, I know uh, sometimes I, I, I go out and I see really really nice looking frames um, and I'm tempted to get them but I look at the back of them and I see that the rabbit depth is too narrow and, and it just it it's heartbreaking <laughs> so um, because I know that the the canvas is not going to fit in that but uh, so just pay attention to that and um, but uh, you know like I said I think this uh, this would work just fine if there's you know this is about um, if this is five eighths of an inch thick and this is half an inch then there's only about an eighth of an inch uh, coming up from uh, from the back here so uh, that's not a that's not a big deal um, you just want to make sure that uh, that your painting fits in there and it, then it's just a matter of uh, putting it in place using the offset clips and offset clips you can buy pretty much at any art store uh, Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever uh, anywhere that that sells frames they're gonna have the framing hardware to go with it so uh, these are these are a good thing to have uh, I actually buy mine from Jerry's Artorama they have them in uh, I think uh, boxes of a hundred so um, that's what I got right here this is just a box of uh, 100 of these guys these are quarter inch quarter inch offset clips they come in different sizes there's 1 8 inch offset clips there's uh, I think 5 8 there's a half inch um, so they come in different sizes but um, these are a quarter inch um, and uh, that's pretty much it here I've got the the wire that I'm gonna be using so let's go ahead and let me show you how this is done uh, it's really simple um, like I said if you are an artist and uh, 
and, and you, you do paintings, um, I think it's an excellent thing to be able to frame them uh, by yourself in, instead of taking it to a framer and having it done for you. Um, it's really easy to do it yourself as long as you've got the frame and you've got uh, a painting that will fit into it. Um, so it's just a matter of um, just sticking the frame in there or sticking the, the painting in there. And let me see, I don't think I'll need the filler. I, I won't. Um, I, I had the filler just in case, but I think we'll be able to just put the backing in just like that. Um, and then we got uh, the offset clips, and obviously uh, the painting fits in there, and it's all the way in there, and even with the backing there's still a bit of a... Um, a little bit of the rabbit death left over so we're just going to stick the offset clip in there just like that and let me get my little screwdriver here and it's just a matter of uh, fastening them fastening them in place All right, so um, we've got uh, the offset clips uh, fastened in place, and I'm gonna measure, um, I think, let's see. I think I can measure about six inches from the top of the frame, just to get an idea. Actually, we'll do. I think we can do five. We'll just do five inches from the top. Um, okay, yeah, that's good. Just put a little mark here. Uh, you, you don't. I mean, because you don't want to go too far down on the, from the top of the frame, but you also you don't want it to be too too close to the top either. Um, so that'll work. That'll work fine. And then from here, it's just a matter of fastening the, the hangers in place. I'm, a, I'm just kind of guesstimating the, the center here of, of the frame. Okay, so we got the, the hangers in place, pretty easy. Now, we just uh, get the wire. And again, all of this framing hardware that I'm using is available anywhere that, I, I, I would imagine, anywhere that frames are sold. Um, now, as far as the amount of wire Um, I would say about an inch from the top of the frame, uh, at least for this frame in particular, is going to be good. Uh, so I'm going to just hold the wire right there, 
and kind of fold it over. And that'll work just fine. That will work just fine. So now it's just a matter of coiling the wire around here. And there are different ways to, to coil it. Some, you know, you can uh, loop the wire through here in different ways and as, uh, as you want. Uh, I'm just going to loop it through once and just coil it around here. Make sure the coils are right next to each other. You don't want the coils to be spread out. You want these, you want it to be pretty tight, so just make sure. That the coils are right up against each other. Sometimes what I will do is um, I'll take a piece of duct tape and kind of wrap it around the the end of the coil here because this wire has some pretty sharp edges and it's really easy to to stab yourself on them or, or to cut yourself. So uh, but this isn't too bad. I can just take my pliers here and just kind of flatten it out and it should be all right yep that's good all right so as you can see the the coils are really nice and and tight uh, I'm just going to do the same exact thing on this side just Coil them around. All right, and that's it. This uh, painting is framed. So let's check it out. Um, now I usually uh, just hang this on a wall to test it out, to test uh, the strength of the, the wire, but it, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be just fine. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, like I said, this is not a, a complicated process. Uh, this is something any painter can do themselves and and should be able to do themselves I think like I said I still need to varnish this painting so I'm gonna be taking it right out of here but just wanted to uh, demonstrate the the process that I that I do when when I'm framing my paintings and uh, hopefully you guys uh, were able to see how easy this is and uh, you'll be able to to frame your own paintings in the future so um, Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, stay tuned for more. Um, hopefully, I'll have a couple more videos coming up pretty soon. But uh, in the meantime, take care of yourselves, and God bless you all.